Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to swap out the oil tank on my 2002 Polaris Sportsman 400 from the OEM plastic to OEM uh, aluminum tank uh, from a previous uh, model year. Um, I don't remember what model year I ended up picking, but uh, this one is pretty similar as I'll show you in a minute. So the problem is, as you probably know, is that these tanks over time tend to leak out of the uh, oil drain plug. And that is due to the fact that uh, there is a bushing inserted into the plastic tank that over time tends to uh, leak probably around the bushing. Maybe it pulls out a little bit as you tighten the bolt and so on. I try to replace the washer, the, the Teflon washer that's behind this bolt. Um, with a brand new one, which I think I paid like $7 or something crazy like that, but I was uh, um, uh, desperate to try something, you know, before, uh, without uh, uh, getting to this point. So um, it didn't work and it still leaked. Uh, nothing major, just leaves a little bit of a spot, you know, on the ground, which obviously, as you can see, I only have plenty of those spots. So I want to avoid that. So I bought a metal tank from ebay used obviously and um, um i'll post in the description uh what year this ended up being and uh, they are not the same and so what you'll notice uh again i'll show you when i pulled that one out in a minute that uh, this hole is not there on the plastic tank this hole is not here it actually comes off on the side right here and then this one is fine, but the size of the holes may be different. Uh, so for this bolt right here, for this opening right here, it came with this guy, which I am going to reuse. And I will probably just adapt the, uh, the holes that's, that's here now to the one that's in, on the ATV right now. Um, again, I'll pull out the other one and show you. The other one has a tube, a, pla uh, a pipe, um, a rubber tube rather that goes here directly. It probably has a barb fitting like this. I don't remember exactly. And then down below here, on mine also leaks a little bit. Um, I did fix it, make it a little bit better from where it was a couple of years ago, but uh, it still seeps through a little bit. And then this is the uh, return, uh, rather this is the return, this is the uh, another pipe, another tube that goes there, and that is there. So this tank came with this little plastic cap that goes there, which is a little bit crooked. Uh, I will probably replace this with a metal uh, bolt. And... Um, and then it came with this nipple, whoops, this nipple uh, right here that goes over there and I'll probably replace it with a metal or brass fitting as well. So I've already started taking apart the tank, I drained the oil, uh, I only changed my oil about a year ago so I'm going to reuse it so I make sure that I drain it into a clean container. Um, so oil is drained, I'm going to remove the tank now and show you what it looks like in comparison to uh, the metal one. All right, so the tank is out. Um, not difficult at all. Two bolts lifted off of this nipple right here. There's a grommet down there on the frame. Uh, undo the hoses and um, twist them a little bit and then they come right off. So differences. Um, this one is essentially in the right uh, same, same place. Uh, again, as you can see, this one was leaking from back here as well, as well as in the front. So. I mean, considering I power washed this thing about a year ago, this is quite a bit of, a, of an oil mess. Uh, this one, this return here is on the side, like I mentioned, this one is on top. And my fear uh, when I was looking at getting this is that um, this uh, fitting here would interfere with the gas tank. And I'll show you what I mean. Here's the bottom of the gas tank. And basically that nipple happens to be right here, but I think it'll clear it because of this uh, uh, curved uh, edge right here. So I haven't propped it up uh, yet. I'll do that next, uh, but I think it's gonna be okay. Uh, this um, nipple here is uh, too small for this hose. And um, uh, so this hose is a little bit larger in the in internal diameter. However, as you notice, the fitting here has a, a very small hole. So if I get another nipple 
um, uh, for the tank, and on one of these breast nipples that has a, a bigger bar fitting here that will fit this hose, I think it'll be fine. In fact, this again, this hose diameter is much bigger anyways uh, than the uh, fitting on the, on the engine itself. Uh, so again, this one I'll, I'll close off. And this one, I just need um, a bar fitting here, which actually this looks like it's the same size. So I'll probably get a new one uh, so that way hopefully it doesn't leak. Uh, there shouldn't be any oil up there anyways, but um, or not much of it anyways, not, no pressure. So uh, I'm gonna dry fit the tank. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Oh, and then of course, the, the other major difference is the uh, oil fill neck. Uh, so this one is down here and which is convenient because it comes out right here uh, for the fill versus, versus this one is uh, way up higher, right? So I'm gonna have to uh, come up with a funnel that I can use that allows me to snake in a tube through here maybe or through here uh, because I think that neck is gonna be somewhere around this height right here. So a funnel that allows me to sneak a, a, a tube there uh, maybe from here, but no, I think it, I think this side will be better so that I can use to, you know, to, when I fill the oil on a regular basis to check the oil. I'll have to do it from the, I'll have to do it from the bottom side. So let's do a quick dry fit. That goes in the nipple there. And I am touching the back side. Yeah, actually the nipple on the back uh, the fitting in the back is below the tank right here so it's no problem uh, the holes I knew those were gonna line up so that's a no problem and the oil drain is fine uh, yeah the only issue is the filler neck so I really don't want to drill a hole so I'll probably just take out the uh, the plastic here when I want to refill but I do need to come up with a hose uh, or a longer funnel that allows me to, to, to fit it right there and then to check it um, yeah hopefully I can I have enough room to take it out um, because it does have a long uh, dipstick so it comes out right there so it's not uh, not ideal but um, if this uh, doesn't leak I prefer to have that inconvenience uh, at the end of the day, I don't use this that much anyways. Uh, but again, I'd rather, have it, I'd rather make sure that it doesn't leak. So I'm going to procure the right fittings, line it all up, and show you how it comes out. So just a quick note before I, again, go get my fittings. Um, I just put the bolts through so that it stays in place. And, if, and, and um, effectively, this is going to be a pain in the butt to take this out. In fact, there is no way this uh, dipstick comes out at all. So filling it won't be an issue from here with a long funnel, but um, I can't take the dipstick out to check the oil. So what I'm thinking of doing, if I can easily take this out real quick. What I'm thinking of doing is um, I have um, a dipstick for a car somewhere in my garage uh, is I'm going to replace it. Uh, it's a flexible um, dipstick and I'm just going to break this one off and replace it so that it's uh, at the same height and everything. So that's going to be my attempt at uh, resolving this issue. Um, I mean, you can buy these caps. They are like fifteen, twenty dollars, which is as much as I pay for the tank. Um, so if I screwed it up, I could always redo it. But um, uh, or or maybe it just doesn't have to be attached, right? So as long as I can take the cap off and uh, stick a, a flexible dip, dipstick inside uh, that I can just carry with me, that might be a better solution. So that way, I don't have anything. You know, I don't have to mess with the uh, with the cap on the bottom there, but still snap this off and then just use a flexible one. So I'm gonna go find it and see if I can use that. Hello everyone, uh, quick update. Finally, I got uh, my fittings in. So here's how this thing is gonna come back together. So first of all, I did a little more cleaning on the tank. Um, I did take uh, this uh, fitting out and it turns out there's a little filter. I think there must have been a, um, 
um, some kind of a screen on it because it seemed to be deteriorated uh, and there was all sorts of crumbs inside the tank. So I managed to basically clean it out uh, with some gasoline actually, uh, washed it out, rinsed it, and uh, now it seems to be nice and clean inside. I can see with the flashlight, it's uh, a lot cleaner now. Uh, so, in terms of this fitting, I got some fittings, uh, I'll describe what they are for the return here, uh, this plug, the return of the oil, and the feed to the, uh, for the oil to back to the engine. Um, so, basically, this fitting, uh, it's a banjo fitting, came out from here, and I decided to, so this, uh, when I received it, uh, came with a hose, which I can uh, find right now. And uh, if you see the earlier part of the video, I guess, you might see what I'm talking about. I can't find it. But anyways, what I did, ah, here it is. So basically, this came like this originally, and it was uh, bolted on right here. So I took that out. Uh, it's a banjo fitting, and I thought of buying uh, new ones uh, for both this port and this port. These are 14 millimeter uh, banjo fittings. Um, but uh, they're about uh, eight to nine dollars, ten dollars maybe on on Amazon. Uh, but what I decided to do is cut this off, and it fits the uh, the hose that comes from the engine nicely. So I just cleaned it up with some sandpaper, and I'm going to put two clamps. Obviously, it's not uh, barbed over here, but with two clamps, it should be fine. It is a nice tight fitting. So this will go here, like that. Um, then this plug right here is a 1.8 MIP plug. I got this from Home Depot. And this is a 1.8 MIP to 3.8 barb, uh, which I got on, on Amazon for about $7. Kind of a ripoff for fitting that little, but it is what it is. Just want to get this done. And then, uh, like I said, when I took this out, the screen came out, and uh, so I wanted to preserve this. That was the other reason why I didn't go with uh, a banjo fitting for this area right here. And I did find a fitting on eBay, which fits a little bit tight on the hose that uh, comes from the engine, but I got it to fit, and uh, I'm just gonna put a clamp on there, uh, this style clamp. Uh, and that is a one quarter mip to half inch barb. So may want to go a little bit smaller on that. Uh, it's definitely not three eighths. Uh, so, so I guess somewhere in the middle. So again, the one eight mip to three eight barb is for the uh, fitting up here. Uh, it fits nicely. The one eight mip plug is right there. Reuse the banjo fitting over there. Otherwise this would have been a 14 millimeter banjo. And then for this plug, here it is. This is the one quarter MIP, which is the thread, by the way, in case you didn't know, uh, two half inch barb. And this is gonna screw in right there and work out just fine. So I'm gonna put it together now. Uh, when I put these down, I screw them in just enough so that they are a little bit kind of wrench tight, but nothing crazy. Otherwise, obviously you'll crack everything. Uh, and nothing should leak. The only real pressure, I believe, uh, is on this connection right here, uh, which used to have this right there. So there's no pipe dope or anything like that in here. So if it wasn't leaking before, it shouldn't leak now. Uh, so I'm gonna proceed to put this back together. Okay, everyone, so final clip of the uh, oil tank swap from plastic to aluminum tank is uh, good. Uh, result is good. Um, so I showed uh, all the different fittings and now here is what it looks like mounted up. It fits exactly where the old one was and we already knew that. Um, and as I mentioned earlier on, the different um, fill cap in the different location is obviously not ideal. Uh, but I was actually able to sneak the, uh, uh, the cap back on uh, while the tank is mounted underneath the fender here. Basically putting, you, you kind of have to do it when the fender is clean because, you know, dust does tend to fall down if you're you know, scraping this stuff off. Uh, so you kind of hold the cap over here and kind of sneak the... Uh, uh, the back end uh, on one side and then kind of, you know, curve it a little bit gently. Uh, it does bend just enough so that it sneaks in there. So I didn't have to touch anything. The big question now uh, is, uh, do I fill to the level of this uh, fill stick, uh, dipstick? Um, 
or do I fail to the original eight ounce level that the tank is supposed to have? So when I emptied this, uh, I did mention earlier on that uh, I was gonna reuse the oil. So uh, the oil that I had in the original plastic tank was at the right level and drained it into a container, a clean container. I put it back in here and now it shows, it's basically telling me to add eight ounces of oil. So again, the question is, do I use the same amount that, I, that it had before or do I now fill it up to what this dipstick is telling me? So question for everybody, if you guys know, I would uh, love to hear your comments and recommendations. Um, for now, I, I'm going to leave it alone. It is just underneath the, uh, you know, the low level mark. Uh, so basically I would have to add eight ounces. Maybe I'll add four ounces, kind of go in between and, and call it a day. Uh, obviously, as long as it doesn't cause problems with the, uh, with the engine. Uh, the uh, fill uh, cap is back on, obviously. Uh, it is nice and clean. I mentioned that I had already replaced the washer for a $7 washer because uh, I was desperate to try something in order to stop that leak, but that didn't work. So I did reuse that brand new washer, essentially, and uh, uh, that is nice and clean. And um, by the way, uh, if you noticed in the earlier clips, uh, you might have noticed that my uh, uh, radiator reservoir was uh, leaking there from that nipple. And uh, I took the opportunity when this tank was out to take that out as well. And basically what it turned out is that there was no uh, Teflon tape on the thread of this uh, uh, little black nipple there. So basically I unscrewed the nipple, uh, put some Teflon tape, put it back on, and it's holding up. Um, uh, so that is in case you know you have leaks under there, that's one thing to note. So anyways, it's back on and um, I am going to show you the other side. How all of the different hoses were routed. So as you can see there, uh, the big hose, it's on the bottom. Basically I left that the uh, length that it was. I just kind of curved it up a little bit there, gave it that gentle curve that comes into the fitting. The uh, return oil, uh, the smaller hose, let's see if I can put this thing down. The smaller hose, um, this guy, let's see, where am I? This guy right here that comes from that um, uh, Benjo fitting is, uh, I did have to cut about uh, maybe an inch, uh, maybe a half an inch or so on the back end. But as you can see, it does route nicely up and it meets gently with the, with the, uh, with the fitting there. Uh, two holes clamps to make sure that there is no leaks there because again, that one is not a barbed uh, fitting. Uh, plugs are holding up, uh, the fitting at the top is holding up fine, so everything looks good on this side as well. Uh, no leaks, uh, I just ran it for about a half an hour, and um, so it looks good. So, uh, this is it, conclusion. Um, I think this is, uh, if you can find a cheap uh, tank on eBay, uh, this one was, um, I don't remember, about... Uh, maybe $30 or so with shipping, $32 or something like that. The fittings, I probably spent another $15 or so in fittings, maybe $20, let's call it. Um, so well below $100 uh, fix for, the, for those oil leaks, which uh, are, are annoying. They were small enough, but you know, annoying nonetheless. Um, so anyways, um, good modification uh, on my uh, Polaris uh, Sportsman 400, uh, 2002. Um, have fun with yours. Bye.